Hey guys, it's the Tyrant here, and I have a fun fact and shocking realization here for you today. Right now, the Halo franchise here in 2016 is officially older than the original Super Mario Bros. game was back when Halo first came along. Yep, it's true. Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo Entertainment System was first released back in 1985, the same year I was born. Halo Combat Evolved, on the other hand, debuted for Apple back in the year 2000. Now, to be fair, all we really saw was a demo, and it wasn't released to the public until a year later, after Bungie teamed up with Microsoft and became a console game. A2, Bungie. A2. But still, it's hard to believe that Halo was first showcased 16 years ago. And if you're like me and you grew up in the late 80s and straight into the 90s, the console scene went through some major evolutionary changes back then. For me personally, I started out with Nintendo. Then, when Sega came into the picture, Nintendo upped its game by going the Super Root. Meanwhile, a lesser-known console known as the TurboGrafx-16 fought hard to earn its place on the market. But despite releasing some really amazing content, they just couldn't keep up with the two console giants. However, when Sony decided to enter the picture, Sega started to sweat a little bit. Nintendo didn't have too much trouble with their N64 being a fun alternative to the PlayStation, but Sega Saturn just didn't cut it. And finally, Microsoft entered the picture with the Xbox, and Sega's Dreamcast just couldn't compete anymore. And what's funny is, after Sega dropped out of the picture, the console wars have pretty much been a steady three-way race. Not much else has changed. And more so, you're probably wondering, why the hell am I bringing this up when this is supposed to be a video about Halo? Evolution, my friends. Today I want to take you through the course of Halo's evolution and why the series went from being a revolutionary franchise to falling towards the wayside. And in case you're wondering, no, this is not a video bashing the newer games or 343 Industries taking it over. In fact, if you'd like to see how I rank the games, don't forget to check out both my Halo Time Travel and Evolution video where I rank all of the major Halo titles, as well as my Halo 5 Drunken Review. If you're watching this on a mobile device, I've placed links in the description as well. What I want to do for you is over the course of the next few videos show you how Halo, a once evolutionary and iconic symbol in the gaming world, slowly became what it is today. And like Nintendo and Sega, it's not always the product to blame, but rather the world that continues to form around it. We're going to kick things off with what every good structure needs, and that's a foundation. And the foundation for Halo, of course, is the very first game, Halo Combat Evolved. Now, it's important to know right off the bat that Halo already had a lot going for it right out of the box. It served as a launch title for Microsoft's very first console and a new generation for gaming. This was the game that people saw when they were trying out this new introduction into the console wars. So odds are, if you purchased an original Xbox, Halo was going to be on that list of games somewhere. And when my brother first described it to me, I was less than impressed. I mean, I'd played first-person shooters before, and while I always found them fun for a little while, they eventually got repetitive and dull. You see, back when I was growing up, the term FPS to me brought to mind games like Doom and Quake for the PC, 007 Goldeneye and Turok for the console, and for those of you who actually remember this game, Ice and Fire for the Apple Macintosh. Then, I finally got a chance to play it. Now, I'll admit, right off the bat I wasn't immediately impressed just because of the first closed-in mission, the Pillar of Autumn. I mean, sure, the graphics were miles ahead of what I'd been used to, they were smooth and fluid rather than all blocky and tank-like. At least I gave it that much credit, but I mean, only being able to carry two weapons at once? What the hell was this abomination? Then, I set foot on the Halo ring for the first time. That moment right there was the moment that would change my entire perspective of gaming forever. The thing is, Bully only credits themselves for coming up with a 30 second formula that players love to repeat. Run, gun, and grenades. But it was so much more than that. Now, it wasn't necessarily that Halo brought any real brand new standalone elements to the table. Most of what we've seen in Halo we've seen before in some shape or form in another game. No. It was what they brought in, and how perfectly they made those elements work together. 
Prior to Halo, I was generally accustomed to first-person shooters having lots of tight, repetitive corridors. And sure, while Golden and I had a few outdoor missions where you could roam around, what it lacked was atmosphere and character. But when you were on Halo, you were truly on a different and organic world. But it didn't just stop with environments and how vastly different and immense they were from mission to mission. It was also the life in those missions. And of course, I'm talking about the Covenant, the Flood, and the Sentinels. Never before had I seen enemies that were faction-based and could work together to take on you, or even another entirely different faction. This wasn't the simple arcade-style shooter I was used to. This was an actual interstellar war. And while at first I was unimpressed with the tools I was given in which to fight this war, I learned to love them quickly. It's still hard to believe there was once a time I actually complained about only being able to hold two weapons at once, when really that was a key dynamic that made the game so much fun. It forced you to strategize and look at each battle individually rather than think you could simply waltz right into any battle like a tank and just hose your way through. And though the weapon selection in the original game was small, you really had everything you needed. For the humans, you had the pistol as your standard close to medium range headshot weapon, the assault rifle as your arbitrary machine gun, the shotgun for close quarter domination, the sniper rifle for long range, and your ultimate power weapon, the rocket launcher. On the alien side, you had the seemingly weak plasma pistol. That is, until you learned that an overcharged shot could knock out an elite shield instantly, that is. You had the rapid fire plasma rifle, with combined with the original Halo's plasma stun effect could be very effective weapons. And finally, there was the Needler, which, believe it or not, if you knew how to use it properly, could be utilized like a homing grenade launcher. And there were only two types of grenades in the game, but really that's all you needed. The frag grenade had the biggest boom, and the plasma grenade could stick to enemies for an insta-kill. You also had two power-up variants, active camouflage to make you invisible for a short period of time, and an overshield to allow you to take extra damage. Vehicles were limited to the Warthog, Ghost, Scorpion Tank, and Banshee, and no I'm not counting the rate because you couldn't use it back in Halo 1, but again, considering this was only supposed to introduce you to the next generation of gaming, this again was really all you needed. But the succulent, creamy filling was the story, and who can argue with that? I had never seen a first-person shooter take such pride in their storytelling. It was like watching a mysterious sci-fi Hollywood-grade production. I'd never seen anything like this in a video game before. The mystery, the music, the plot twists, the characters, all to this day remain to be iconic and unforgettable. This was a time, remember, when multiplayer, as fun as it was and had a very diverse palette of maps and game types, was still just an afterthought compared to the campaign itself. In fact, to this day, the series has yet to come out with another game where both the gameplay and the storyline are both off the charts and equally complement each other really well. I mean, honestly, in every game we've had since the original, it always tends to lean either more one way or more the other way, but they were never equal to each other. And little did I know at the time that Bungie Studios and Microsoft were just getting started. In the next video, I'll be talking about how Bungie took the foundation that they had so carefully crafted and used it to start building a monument that would truly stand the test of time. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, I highly encourage you to share it with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. And speaking of social media, I would love it if you followed me on Twitter and Facebook. I've included links below, and I'm really good about getting back to folks quickly on Twitter. I check it every day, usually multiple times a day, and I love seeing what you all have to say. I'm also interested in hearing your thoughts and opinions about this video, and if you're looking forward to seeing the rest. Just want to make sure I'm putting the right effort into it, guys. I also want you to tell me in the comment section what your first FPS game was and for what system. Again, thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to see more, don't forget to click that subscribe button for more video game content every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'll see you guys on Friday, and as always, I'm the Tyrant, signing off.